mostly checking out all the, the news, cable news networks and things like that. Pretty much, you know, if you look at the different networks and the cable news shows, they're all talking about the same thing, right? It's either the fires in California or the uh, caravan of refugees coming up to our southern border or who or who's not going to survive or the latest uh, cleaning house in the White House, you know, who's out next. And of course, the fallout from the election and the recount. And it's just kind of pretty negative stuff all, all the way around. And you can't help but think that our country is going through a phase of its existence when anger and frustration and suspicion are really peaking for us for a variety of reasons. People from the highest level of government to people on the streets are engaged in a battle of words and attitudes, most of them negative. Hardly a day goes by when people aren't accusing each other or blaming each other or threatening each other over issues which don't necessarily have to be divisive. Well, this is nothing new. Apparently, in the first century in Israel, among the Jewish people and the Christian communities, this kind of division and anxiety was present. In today's first reading, Paul is writing to Titus about the Christian community that he has been put in charge of overseeing. And he writes to Titus telling him that his people, the believers, should be obedient to the authorities and magistrates in their society. He tells them they are to slander no one, be peaceable, considerate, exercising all graciousness towards everyone. What concerned Paul was that the Christian community should do what was necessary to promote peace in society, to not contribute to the division that existed already between Christians and Jews and Jews and the Roman government and so on. And I think we would do well to consider the words of St. Paul as being directed to us. We certainly have issues that we have a right to be passionate about in our society. We are to speak, though, and behave in a peaceful and charitable manner. You know, as people of faith, we have basically two choices. We can enter the fray and contribute to the division that already exists, or we can enter the fray in the hopes of being peacemakers, seeking to unify and heal. Because after all, this is what Jesus did. In today's gospel, he goes about healing people who are sick. And by healing the sick and those who are therefore excluded from the mainstream of society, Jesus is bringing greater unity to society. He's restoring those who are disenfranchised to their rightful place in the common society. The concern of Jesus was that all people, regardless of their physical health or their faith or even their culture, should strive to live as brothers and sisters and children of the same God. Yes, there would always be differences of opinion and even difficult struggles over certain issues, but all should do what was necessary to promote peace and unity. So the challenge we have before us today is to work for unity in our society and even in our church. You know, both are experiencing division right now. We should all consider it our civic duty and our religious duty to bring about the kingdom of of God. We do that by working for the good of all people, meanwhile avoiding slander, malice, ill feelings, confrontation. And that way we make the person of Jesus present in the midst of the struggle and we contribute to